are autonomous agents? Well, they're pieces of software that use LLMs to chain together thought. So they can come up with a question and try and solve it. And in fact, this new paradigm of AI software is a real, real boon for those of us that do any kind of research or want anything done. Because these autonomous agents have access to your file system and have access to your local machine. Now, that might terrify a few of you and certainly terrified me for just a fraction of a second before I remembered that each REPL you spin up is its own computer in the cloud. So if you're using an autonomous agent on Replit, you really haven't got much to worry about because the only thing it can damage is itself. In fact, the big boy that was released last week is AutoGPT. AutoGPT comes in a GitHub repository, and honestly, it's a bit of a pain to set up if you were doing it in your local machine. Well, thanks to our developer advocate, we have a fantastic new template where you can spin up AutoGPT in minutes. Let's give it a go and explore what an autonomous agent can actually do for us. Now, of course, the first thing we we'll have to do is go to OpenAI, log in and get our OpenAI key. You can do that by going to your profile, clicking on view API keys, and hopefully if you created one, you know what it is. Otherwise, click create new key, give it a name, click create secret key and copy this. Now, don't forget that if you sign up for a free account, your first six months, you get a number of dollars of credit to use for your API calls for free. Otherwise, you will have to connect this to a credit card. Back on Replit and let's see how easy it is to spin up AutoGPT. We're going to follow the link to the AutoGPT template. When we get there, we're simply going to fork it. Make sure to make it private if you want your OpenAI key to stay private. And the forking process happens reasonably quickly. Now, we do have a readme.md file to tell you what to do to set it up. But actually, the main thing we've got to do is go to secrets and put in our OpenAI API key. With that, we can click run and we've actually got AutoGPT working already. You see, it's asking us if we want us to continue the previous model, which was an example one. I'm just going to say no to that. And you'll see the first thing it prompts me is to give it a name so I know what I'm looking for. Well, let's have a think about what these autonomous agents are good for. They're very good for doing independent research and just getting on with stuff. They're very good at finding and creating stuff and coming to a conclusion from using Google and using a web browser like a human would. But it's best at chaining things together and creating questions to generate an answer for you. Let's start with something quite simple. Finding the best headphones for a certain budget. So you give it its main goal, and in this case, my main goal is going to be to find the best wireless headphones for under $200. And then it's going to ask me for a couple of goals. So first goal would be to find the best headphones all around for under $200 that are wireless. Goal two, maximize battery life. Should have noise cancellation, be comfy. Someone with a big head should be aesthetically pleasing. Now autonomous AI agents do spend a lot of time thinking and this is because they're coming up with questions to meet the prompt and meet the needs of your topic. You'll see here what it does is it comes up with a question, what it wants to do next, some reasoning and some of its own criticism. All you need to do is say yes or no to whether it should follow that prompt. So I'm going to say yes and let it do its business. You can see that it goes off and gets articles, goes off and searches the web, and then does more thinking and more analysis based on that. Now you might be wondering why it's asking me each time to authorize its request. And the reason for that is, as you can imagine, an autonomous AI agent sending requests back and forth to OpenAI's API gets quite expensive quite fast. This model is running on GPT 3.5, so it's reasonably inexpensive, but you do get the best results from running it on GPT 4. GPT 4 is a very expensive way of running this. And if we just said, yeah, go for it and let it run for as long as it wanted, we could rack up a bill without really realizing. I'm going to try now to tell it to carry on and just keep going for a few. I'm going to give it 10 more requests. So you see that using Y and then a number flag allows me to tell it how many times just get on with it. And I've just said, go through 10 more iterations, go through 10 more thought processes and see where you get. Now, autonomous agents are not perfect. They are a brand new technology. In fact, they're really a brand new paradigm in AI software. 
That means at the moment they do need a little bit of massaging, a little bit of help, and they can go down rabbit holes. When I first encountered these, I asked it to do a big research project on which was the best computer science GCSE in the UK. And it went down a massive rabbit hole of degree level qualifications before I stopped it and prompted it to get back on the right track. These things need to be babied a lot at the moment, but they are only a week old, so I think that's fair. Okay, so it shut down. Has it come to a conclusion? So let's see what it finally decided. After compiling a distant research on each option, including battery life and comfort for someone with a big head, <laughs> I've determined that the Audio Technica ATH MX50X BT2 is the best choice. Not only does it offer 40 hours of battery life, but also known for its level of comfort, even for people with a big head. That's me. Additionally, reviews are saying the overall sound quality is excellent. Now, that's great. I mean, when I go on a shopping spree and I want the best of something, I normally spend hours and hours of my life researching things under certain criteria, comparing reviews. This autonomous agent might not be the most efficient thing in the world, but it's gone off and done something like that and found me a result on its own, whilst I could be doing something else and something more productive with my time. This is an amazing new technology, but let's see what else it can do. Okay. I've got something going on here that I've always wanted to do, but never really had the time to achieve. I've created a folder in my REPL called Audio, and I filled it full of a bunch of MP3 files. Now, something I'd really like to have in a REPL is an RSS podcast feed that I can bring into my phone of audio files that I just drop in myself. I've never really had the time to research the podcast format, make the XML file, or even spend the time to get this working correctly. So let's see if AutoGPT can do this for me. So I've no idea this will work, but I've tried to outline the problem as best I can see it. I want it to automatically scan my audio folder and build an iTunes compatible XML file that can then be hosted online. I also want it to create a file called podcast.py that I can run for myself. So this is pretty cool. The first thing it's doing is looking for an extension library. And once again, I'm going to do Y and probably give it 10 chances to get things working. So this is interesting now. It is actually trying to do things with the file system. Now, the first, its first go, podgen.py, hasn't worked. So it's gonna try something different. This is interesting. It's having some trouble installing the podgen library via pip, and that's perfectly normal because library installation in a REPL is best achieved with the package manager. Of course, it doesn't know it's running on REPL. It doesn't know there's a package manager available to it. <laughs> and this is why you need to massage them. So let's try running that again and continuing with it, but this time we'll try and prompt it slightly differently. We'll continue with this, and when it decides to try and use pip this time, we'll tell it not to. So see here I can give it some feedback, and in this case it was getting stuck on that podgen library. So let's see what it does when I tell it to use something different. And you see it's getting stuck in a loop, and this is one of the common problems with these at the moment. It's sort of worked out what it needs to do, but it's having some difficulty, and it's struggling with that. So I'm going to give it some feedback. Again, so you get, it's getting a bit confused here. It's trying to see if FeedGen's installed and it's not actually doing that. Okay, it's getting stuck in a bit of a loop there, but you can see the potential of this. If I can talk it out of that loop, I can get it to actually set everything up for me and build everything, which would be pretty cool. But let's try something a little bit different. I've heard a lot about Tailwind CSS recently, and let's see if it can justify to me if I should be using it or not. So I'm going to give it 10 chances to get it right and loop through because what I've asked it to do is find out what Tailwind.css is, compare it to similar products, give me a list of pros and cons, and tell me whether it's worth me changing over to use it or not. And you can see that it does a reasonable job of its first stab of finding out about what it is. Now it's going to take a look and browse some websites to find out a little bit about it. And you can see the cool thing about it is it's got a big website that was bigger than the amount of tokens that we could use with GPT, and it's just used chunking to summarize it in different parts so it's got that understanding and this is why these autonomous agents are so good it is using and working around the limitations of our lens to get them to actually think about things and basically chain together thought which is absolutely amazing to see in practice so you'll see here that it's been that it's been writing the pros and cons to a file take a look at our outputs folder for that because if we leave it working in the background you see already it's generated this document for me pros of using pros and cons so we've got that which is great because I, i've got an executive summary basically of, of the research it's done so far oh has it produced a markdown table for me <laughs> it has let's open that in a preview and see wow 
That's pretty cool that it's done that. That's pretty cool indeed. Let's see where it is. Oh, this is interesting. So it's actually asked the LLM to justify whether its summary was accurate. It's a nice way of checking your work, isn't it? So I'm just going to ask it to give me a decision because we're not going forever. But there we go. Well, that was a pretty cool example, actually. And it could have gone on for a while. But this is the beauty of an autonomous agent. I'm not spending that time myself. I could give it a hundred chances to go through and get the data and go and do something else. In fact, if I turn my REPL always on, I could just close it and come back to it at a different time and see what was happening. It is amazing how much work these things can do and automate for you. And in fact, we are at the very cutting edge of what we can do with them. In fact, most things you attempt with it will probably be the first time anyone's even attempted that. In fact, when I was using this yesterday to compare different GCSE courses in the UK, it is quite likely that it's the first time anyone's done it to compare academic courses ever. These things are a week old. It's amazing. Why don't you get onto Replit, fork that template, pop in your open API key and see what an autonomous agent can do for you. And don't forget one of the really amazing things about Replit is you can do all these from the mobile app on your phone. In fact, that's what I'm going to do next. Because if there's one thing that autonomous agents is good for, is research. And as you'll see, I need to do a serious bit of research whilst I'm getting back to my vacation. See you next time, guys.